on May 8, 2008, 18-year-old Joshua Maddox left his home in a small town of Woodland Park, Colorado to go take a walk on a trail in parkland lying along the Pike National Forest. This was a totally normal thing for him to do. As he was an outdoor lover and often took these walks. So when he said goodbye to his mother and sister, he told them he would be back in a couple of hours and no one thought anything of it. Little did they realize that this was the last time they would ever see him alive. This would only be the start of a strange vanishing and mystery that has never been fully solved. When Joshua did not return by that evening, his family became worried. And when he had still not come home a couple of days later, they reported him as a missing person. Police at first thought he had perhaps ran away from home or possibly even harmed himself. But his family and friends denied this. Joshua was described as a bright and cheerful boy, well liked by his classmates and peers. So it was seen as unlikely that he would have run away or done anything to hurt himself. There was also no sign of mental problems in his history. He had no known enemies and had never been known to use drugs. There was no reason at all to believe that he had any choice in the matter of his disappearance. It was also thought that he might have met with foul play or had gotten lost in the wilderness and in the meantime, a large scale search was started. Volunteers and police scoured the area for many miles around, but no sign of the missing Joshua, leading police to think that he had indeed either run away or met with some sort of foul play. His family began to suspect that maybe he had gone off to start a new life. Police would do everything they could to locate Joshua, but there were no clues, no leads, nothing. And seven years later, he remained missing, as if he had just vanished off the face of the earth. No one had a clue about where he had gone or what had happened to him and hope began to wane that Joshua would ever be seen again. But he would be. It was just not the way anyone had hoped. In August of 2015, a man named Chuck Murphy was working out at an old wooden cabin he owned on a large plot of wooded land less than a mile from the Joshua's home. The area had once been called the homestead of Thunderhead Ranch and Murphy's brother had lived there for a time before it had passed on to him after the brother's passing. The cabin was decaying by that time, used merely as a storage space that Murphy almost never visited. And so he had decided to have the old cabin demolished. As he was doing this, there was a discovery made as the chimney was being torn down. There in the dank darkness was a mummified human body bent over in a fetal position and stuffed into the chimney with its legs above the head. The remains were so decomposed and had been so degraded by the elements that dental records were needed to discover the identity and the results would shock everyone. It was found that the body stuffed into the chimney was none other than the missing Joshua Maddox. And rather eerily, his clothes, shoes and socks had all been removed and were neatly stacked inside of the cabin. For what reasons, no one knew. An autopsy showed that there were no signs of drugs in the system and no apparent signs of serious injuries or trauma such as bullet or knife holes. All things considered and the best that police could come up with was that Joshua had for whatever reason 
crawled into that chimney, gotten stuck, and then died of hypothermia or dehydration. The coroner labeled it as an accidental death, and that was that. But not everyone was convinced. Murphy was quick to point out this would have been impossible, and that someone must have gone through great lengths to intentionally stuff him in there from the fireplace in the cabin. For one, there had been rebar and thick wire mesh installed in the chimney to prevent animals from entering. Murphy said, there's no way that guy crawled inside that chimney with that steel webbing. It didn't come down the chimney. There was also the position of the body and the fact that the legs had been actually disjointed from the torso, which meant Joshua had to have gone down head first and with great force, which didn't make sense. Police had also noticed that a large wooden breakfast bar had been ripped out of the kitchen wall and dragged to the fireplace, seemingly in an effort to block it. Then there were also those clothes eerily folded up inside the cabin. Would Joshua have gone in there, taken off his clothes, shoes and socks and then crawled up that chimney on his own? And if so, how did the breakfast bar get there? None of it made any sense. Unbelievably, despite all of these, the official cause remained accidental death. It would later come to light that a man by the name Andrew Richard Newman had been one of the last people to have seen Joshua alive. And not only that, a witness claimed that Newman had actually bragged about killing him. It turns out that Newman had a long history of criminal offenses, including assaulting a police officer, disorderly intoxication, grand theft and battery. On top of this, he would be arrested for stabbing a handicapped man to death and it would also turn out that he confessed to killing a woman and stuffing her in a barrel in Taos, New Mexico. But someone had already been convicted of that crime. Despite how promising this lead seemed, police essentially ignored it and Newman was not even so much as called for questioning on that matter. Why should this be? Who knows? We are left with a lot of questions here. Why did Joshua Maddox go missing? And how did he turn up in that chimney? Did he crawl in there by himself or was he put there? If so, who and why? What is with the bar pulled up against the chimney and the folded clothes in the cabin? It is pretty bizarre case and such questions are no closer to being answered now than they were then.